Okay, Baruch Olofi, Allah Yishri. mentioned and called it Shahrullahi al Muharram, the month of Allah Tabarakul wa Ta'ala al Muharram. So tonight's topic is some hadith, virtues, some statements of the ulama concerning this blessed month and some misconceptions concerning it. One is all Allah Azza wa Jal and the Tahirana and the Nubina with Dennis and Yob ask Allah to purify us, clean us of our shortcomings, our sins, and our blemishes. When I saw Allah and your Nura Wajuhina Wajuhina Wakulubina the Iman will ill will Allah. We ask Allah to make our faces and our hearts enlighten with the knowledge that will produce Iman actions and that which is <coughs> application I mean if you go to real the Salahim which is the <coughs> famous book of Imam Noah and it is the It is the the calmest one ish rule for me a time. Calmest what ish rule. Calmest is number five. Ish rule is twenty. So twenty five, and then me a time is two hundred. So by the chapter two hundred and twenty five. This is the chapter real Salahin that the Imam Noah chose to talk about the issue of fasting and Muharram. Mm. It says Babel Bayan, the chapter in which it is made clear and clarity is mentioned concerning Asiyan fi Muharram wa Sha'ban wa Ashur al Huram. The fasting, the virtues of fasting in Muharram, Al Muharram. This is the first month and the new calendar that we, we were benefiting and living now on the Muslim calendar. Sha'ban, that's the month before Ramadan. Prerequisite for getting ready for Ramadan. And Ashrul Yani Muharram. And Ashur here means months and Yani Muharram here when it's mentioned with Ashur it's talking about the Hijjah. Because the Hijjah is sacred month. The month we just left. Now, Al Muharram 
is the first sacred month. So you have two sacred months back to back. And then you have Yani, the virtues of Baraka or Fikum, and the Ka'da, which is the month before the Hijjah, after the Eid, after Shawwal, which is sacred. And there's not many um, hadith talk about doing something to Ka'da, but that's the beginning of the Hajj, where you can make Hajj to the Ka'da. Then the Hijjah is the Hajj season, which is sacred. And then the Muharram is what we're in now. So you never know when he chose to talk about Sha'ban, but he mentioned Al Muharram first, and then you know, the other months that are sacred. And this by itself, the Imam bringing all of them in one chapter shows you the virtue of Al Muharram, because we know the virtue of fasting, you know, in, 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 in Ramadan, the virtue of fasting, the Sha'aban, the virtue of fasting, the first 10 days of Hijjah. And so now al Muharram is coupled with that. And one of the things in the religion is when something is paired or put in a group with things that are great, then in a, it, it in itself is great because of being in that category. Mm. So the first hadith we want to bring the hadith of Abu Huraira. And we're not going to bring all of the hadith in that chapter because it's talking about all of those things. Our focus is on Al Muharram. So Abu Huraira says, because Qala Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Afdalu Siyam, Afdalu Siyami, the best fast. So Prophet Sallam is going to highlight what is the best fast. And of course, we know the best fast is what? Ramadan. So the Prophet is going to talk about the best fast after the Ramadan. Mm -hmm. So he says, after the Siyam, the Ramadan. So Ramadan is the best fast because it is the obligation of the pillars and it is the thing that the Prophet he mentioned, whoever does it, Iman Wahdi Sabin, he does it believing in it and he's doing it for the reward of Allah, Gufur Allahu Ma Taqaddam Min Dambih then all of his past sins will be forgiven. Now, and people are saved from the fire every night in Ramadan. And Allah Tabaraku wa ta'ala sent down the Quran in that month, which is called Layrat al-Qadr. So all of this shows you Ramadan is the best month to fast. Allah is locked, absolutely. But after Ramadan, Salam said, after the Siyami, after the Ramadan, the best fast after Ramadan, the best Time to fast the Ramadan after Ramadan, pardon me, is Shahrullahi al Muharrama. So, here the Prophet he was asked, What is the best time to fast? Meaning, after Ramadan, and he said, After the Suyami, Ba'da Ramadan, the best fast you can do after Ramadan. Then he said, Shahrullahi al Muharrama, that is. The month Shahrullahi, the month of Allah, or yani, the month that Allah Azawajal has made special, Al Muharrama. He said, Well, after the Salati, and this is one hadith about the Faridati, then the best Salat after the five daily prayer. Faridha means five daily prayer. A Salatu Mada al the prayer in the night. So the Prophet combined two great things. The best fast, Ramadan fasting in Shahrullahi al Muharramah, and the sacred month, which we're in now, fasting in that month is the best fast you can do after Ramadan in general. And the best salah after the five daily prayer is to pray in the night. Now, and this hadith is for Rahul Imam Muslim, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. Imam Muhammad Musalih al Urthaymi, he talks about this chapter in Real the Soul. He's going to take benefit from that. He says, He says, the Prophet mentioned the fast in the Sha'aban. Mm -hmm. And we know Aisha, she said, the Prophet he used to fast most of or all of Sha'aban except. A small portion of it and this is and 
why the people have been encouraged to fast most of Shabbat. But here's the point. That's before Ramadan. And that's in preparation for Ramadan. So what happens when Ramadan leaves? What's the best month to fast? Because fasting, again, Allah says, Allah from Tetakun. This is the thing that helps the Muslim stay in line with Taqwa. So it has to be a month that's great. It has to be a month that's suggested. It has to be a time in which we can fast, particularly after Ramadan. And there are other times, but the Fasalam is mentioning yani, Al Muharram with these great yani, events. So Imam Al Taymin is highlighting that the Fasalam used to yani, not fast more than Ramadan in any other month except yani, uh, Sha'aban. Okay. And this year, the Fasalam used to fast. Most of the Ali Shabbat, uh, and this shows it means making the point this is Ramadan in the preparation, so that's the purpose in mind. And to fast and Shabbat, the Prophet used to do it as preparation for Ramadan, prerequisite, getting ready. Mm -hmm. And then the Shaykh says, and as for Al Muharram, then this is the month that's between suffer with suffer. It's the month after Muharram. It's the second you know, month on the calendar, and it's after the Hijjah, which is the high season. So when you look, you know, I mean, this Prophet he mentioned that the best fasting after Ramadan is in Al Muharram. And you can see it's the first month of the Muslim calendar. First month. And this the Prophet mentioned generally. So many ulama they said that the fact that the Prophet mentioned it generally, then that means you can fast as much as you like in this month of Muharram. You can fast as much as you want because the Prophet said it's the best month. But the Prophet he also highlighted Ashura, the tenth of Muharram. And in Shaykh al he said a person therefore should fast. Yani, the tenth, along with the ninth, the day before it, or the tenth, along with the eleventh, yeah, I mean, after it. And and this is also, yeah, I mean, something the Prophet mentioned. Another hadith to fast, yeah, I mean, every month at least three days. And this, the Prophet them, when that hadith was mentioned, the ulama they said he didn't really. Um, Highlight which part of the month. So as long as you fast three days in every month, that's the idea. Although many of the scholars said it's better to do the three days in which the night before the moon is full. Because if you think about it, you can get it in and get it out of the way. It's easy to remember and not to miss. Because when you see the moon, you know, okay, tomorrow I'm going to fast. When you see the moon, you say, okay, tomorrow I'm going to fast. And when you see the moon, you say, okay, tomorrow I'm going to fast. And you have your three. And so Salem, he mentioned to fast three days out of every month. It's like you fast the whole year. If you add three days out of every month times the whole year, that's three, 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 three. And if each day is multiplied times 10, it's like you're fasting the whole month. So if you fast three days for 12 months, it's as if you fast 30 days for 12 months, which 30 days times 12 is what? A whole year. So this is why the Salaam encouraged that to fast three days in every month. So this is inclusive in the speech of Shaykh Wolf Amin because this is why some scholars said that, yeah, I mean, it's okay if you fast Ashura, which is the ninth, and you fast, I mean, pardon me, the Ashura, which is the 10th from Ashura. Ashura, which is the 10th, and then you add the day before Tassel, the 9th, and had the Ashura 11. So some scholars said, because of the issue of fasting three days in every month, a person is allowed to fast the 9th, the 10th, and the 11th. Why? Because you got your three days out of the way. And <clears throat> Ibn Hajr al-Asqalani in his Fatul Bari, he said that 
There are three levels of this fasting when we talk about Ashura. And Ashura, we said that the Prophet he uh, approached, came upon some Jews. He came upon some Jews in Medina and they were fasting. And he asked them, I mean, what were they doing? Why were they fasting? They said, Hada yom najahallahu Musa wa 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 min Fir'aun. This is the day that Allah saved Musa and his people from Fir'aun. So they said, فَنَحْنُ نُصُونَ شُكْرًا يَعْنِي لِلَّهِ تَبَارُكُ وَتَعَالَى They said, so we're fasting to show gratitude to Allah. So the Prophet ﷺ, he said, نَحْنُ أَوْلَى بِمُوسَى مِنْكُمْ He said, we have more right. In another word, in the scholar said, this is authentic. نَحْنُ أَحَقَّ بِمُوسَى مِنْكُمْ يعني We have more right. More claim to Musa in reality to you. Nahnu awla. This means, yani, we are the ones who are most in line before anybody when it comes to Musa as a prophet because the Jews kept Rabbi Isa. They disbelieve in Isa. Well, kept Rabbi Muhammad. They disbelieve in Muhammad. So, really, this makes them disbelievers. While Tabarakhu wa Ta'ala, he said in the ayah, Tasa wa Situn. Min Ali Amran, 69 of Ali Amran, the third surah, Allah Tabarakhu wa Ta'ala said, Inna awal al Nasa bi Ibrahim al Ladina yet Tabiruhu, wa had al Nabiyu al Ladina Amanu, wallahu wali you, wallahu wali you He said, Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned that. Those who are most tied to Ibrahim and that prophet, meaning the prophet Muhammad, and those that believe with the prophet, there are those who have the most claim, they have the far most uh, connection to Ibrahim. And Al Tabaraku wa Ta'ala said, Wallahu waliyu yani lilmu'mini, that Allah is the guardian of those who believe. So this ayah is also in context to Musa, meaning that we are the ones who have the most claim, the first claim, the far most, you know, um, deen of Musa and all of the prophets going back to Ibrahim because of the believing in them, number one. No Muslim can disbelieve in any prophet. And number two, all of the Muslims have the same tawheed, the same aqa'id, the salima, sahiha, the same belief in their heart and chest about their Lord as all the other prophets and messengers. So that's why the Prophet ﷺ said, يعني, نَحْنُ أَوْلَى يعني, بِمُوسَى مِنْكُمْ أَوْ نَحْنُ أَحَقَى بِمُوسَى مِنْكُمْ We are, يعني, have the most claim before you all and anybody to Musa. And so the Prophet ﷺ, he said um, that he was going to start fasting at that point on Ashura and he started to fast. And then the Prophet ﷺ, he said, يعني, um, uh, uh, <coughs> the Prophet ﷺ, then the Prophet he said, Yani, wa in the Kaitu ila 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 Mokabe. He said, And if I live to see the next year, la asum tasir, I'm going to add the ninth, Yani, to my fasting on this day, which he met the Jews and started fasting as a commemoration and as a shukr to Allah because of. Freeing Musa and his people from Fir'aun on the 10th of Muharram. So this is why uh, we fast on the 9th and the 10th, because the Prophet fasts on the 10th, and it's highly recommended. Now, it's highly recommended. Some scholars said that it's Sunan Mu'akkira, it is highly recommended, yani, because the Prophet did it, and it, because the Prophet Sallam, when he was asked about the best fasting, he didn't say Muharram. This is another point that many ulama they make. Like Sheikh Ali Farouk of uh, Jazair of Algeria from Ahl Sunnah. He said this is a big mistake. People talk about the month, they say Muharram. No, the Prophet said Al-Muharram. 
And this is the only month that Allah connected the Alif and the Lamb to because he wanted to be known particularly that this month is different from the other month. It's a sacred month, number one. And it's the month that, again, Musa was free and his people from Fir'aun. So that's a historical event. And Allah Tabarakul wa ta'ala, because of his greatness, the Prophet called it Shahwallahi, the month of Allah. And they said, anytime Allah, his name is connected with something, it's from uh, the perspective of yani, ta'adheem, making something great, and yani, min bab sharf, and making something noble, like Rasulullah. He's called the Messenger of Allah because yani, of the nobility and the greatness of that Messenger. Baytullah, the house of Allah. Allah connected his name to a house of worship because of the greatness and the nobility of that house. Naqatullah, the she camel of Allah. He connected his name to that camel because of the greatness of that camel and the nobility of that camel. So much so, when they slaughtered Allah Taala, ta destroyed them, and the ulama they said it, the destruction brought a loud noise like boom, boom. That's why in Surah Al Shamsi, Allah said, "Fadam dam alayhim rabbuhum dam dam." In the ayat itself, subhanAllah, in the Arabic language. Because they destroyed not just Napa, but they destroyed Napa to Allah. The she camel that Allah called it his camel, meaning to show loftiness and greatness to that particular camel that they slaughtered. So, this in itself was one of the reasons that people were fasting on the 10th of Muharram, which is going to be based on the Tabakah wa Ta'ala. Yom al-Sabt al-Qadr, this Saturday coming up. Wa sunnatun fi'liya wa qawliya, and it's sunnah by action, because he said, la'in daqaytu ila muqabil, and if I was to be alive, if I live to see next year, he said, la'asumanna, this is, this is the lamb uh, 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 of, to uh, uh, talk he in the noon the bad to emphasize something. La asumanna atasir. He said, I'm going to indeed fast on the ninth. A long meaning with the tenth that he started the fast when he met the Jews and they were fasting. Why? Mr. Sallam as Shaqtullah Fozan. Shaqtullah ibn Fozan he said, and this is not Salah. This is Abdullah, his younger cousin, Abdullah Fulzan, Medina. He said that the Prophet وسلم, the reason he said, if I live to see next year when the fast of Tasir, the Asumanna, I'm indeed going to fast on the ninth. He said, because the Sahaba asked him when he said to them the fast on the tenth. Comment section. When he said. Finish. Fast on the tenth. When they came upon the Jews, they were fasting. The prophet started to fast, and he commanded those companions. But this ruling for what's a command is highly recommended because another narration prophet said, "Sunman yani man arada for sumo, for man for man for man arada yani aktaro." He says, "So whoever wants to fast." Let them start fasting now. Whoever wants to eat, not fast, let them not you know, fast. So we know, even though the prophet said fast, it's an encouragement strongly. It's not an obligation. But here's the point. They said, it's as if you're telling us to imitate these Jews. Because the Prophet Sallam, from his religion, from the way of Allah Taala, his messenger, is that the prophet would oppose the Jews and Christians and everything. This is from his sunnah, from his sharia, to oppose them. So when he's telling the companions fast on this day, because the Jews are fasting, we have more right to Musa, they said this is if you're telling us to follow them. Like, you know, some confusion here. So the prophet, he said, لَأَنْ بَقَيْتِ إِلَى مُقَابِلِ He said, if I live to see next year, 
I'm going to fast the ninth along with the tenth. Why? Because he wanted to show them, I'm telling you to fast because of this great event, but I'm also going to oppose them if I live to see next year, I'm going to add the ninth and the tenth. And there's another narration when he told them also to fast the tassif, the fast the ninth, yani the previous, uh, uh, not the previous part, the next year, yani that, that they should fast the ninth, yani as well as the tenth. And there's a narration of Allah ibn Abbas, Ma'kufan. Ma'kufan means it's a statement of the companions, basically. You can't say that the prophet said, you have to say the companions said. Even if they say it's an afr, it's a narration or hadith, that means it stops with the companions. And mawkuf means it stops with the companions. Sometimes they have a, a, a mawkuf meaning it stops with the companions. It's authentic, other times it's not authentic. This is authentic. Well, beloved Nabas, he said, if you fast on the 10th, fast the 9th and the 10th, and they fast the 10th and the day before, or fast the tenth and the day after. And why? Because the concept of the prophet saying, if he lives to see the next year, he's going to fast the ninth and the tenth. Then this, the Sahaba understood, if you don't fast the ninth, but you fast the tenth, then you should fast the day after so that you oppose, that you're different from the Jew, Yani, and the Christian in your worship. That's why Ibn Qayyim al Josiah he said, that a person can fast the ninth and the tenth. That's the best way. Or the tenth and the eleventh. That's the next best way. Or just fast on our shore as the prophet did when he approached the Jews and found them fasting. And some scholars, yeah, they deem that to be my cruel dislike because of not opposing them with the day before or after. But we see the Prophet them fasted. He fast on uh the Ashura and then yeah, and the companions followed him in that. So it is permissible. It's only yeah, and not preferred as it relates to opposing the Jews and, yeah, and the Christians. But of course, it is better to fast on the Ashura than to not fast because of the greatness yeah, and the, of that month. You also have the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam again yeah, and the, uh, uh, in the hadith of uh, 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 Sa'd ibn Abi Waqas, uh, uh, that uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam yani, encouraged the people to um, fast three days out of every month. Three days out of every month. And that's why some scholars even added, if you want to fast 9, 10, and 11, this is permissible. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he used to fast three days out of every month. And some scholars said the best time to fast those three days is when the moon is full. Some said the 12th, 13th, 14th. While what's most known is the 13th, 14th, and 15th. And scholars said this is what's reported in the Prophet Wasallam. Although some said 12th, 13th, and 14th. What's known and authentic is that the Prophet Wasallam encouraged the moon when it's full, 13th, 14th, and 15th. But it did not stop the prophet from fasting in the beginning nor the end of the month so as long as he got his three days in and that's the point so if someone wants to fast 9 10 and 11 he catches ashura he opposes the jews by adding a day before and he does the day after which makes his three days in every month now and then you have also the false narration that the prophet وسلم, was supposed to have said Whoever fast uh, the last night of the Hijjah, that is the month that we just left on the Islamic calendar. So imagine tonight is the last night of the Hijjah. So tomorrow is the last day. You fast tomorrow. And then tomorrow night is the first night of Al Muharram. And the next day you fast the first of Muharram. Then there is some hadith that people say the Prophet said that person who fasts who fast the first day of Muharram along with the last day of the previous month, the Hijjah, he will get rewarded for uh, fasting Kamsina uh, 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 50,000 years. Then, as the ulama, they said, Hadha hadithan makdub ala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, that it is fabricated on the Prophet. 
those who said who were fast the last day of the Hijjah and the first day of the Haram, that he will have 50,000 years of worship. Confidence in that. Allah must know. And also, some people, they try to say that there's special worship in al Muharram, special worship because of what the Prophet said about fasting in that month being the best time to fast, the best month after Ramadan. <coughs> but you can't have special worship, special food. And for example, some people try to have a special dhikr and special salah the night of Juma, later to Juma. The Prophet didn't legislate that. And some people try to have special food and special dhikr, special sayings. No, the Prophet didn't tell you to do any of that. The only thing the Prophet legislated for Al Muharram that it is the best month to fast after the fasting in Ramadan. If you say, well, so that means we're going to pray a hundred rakah, or we're going to hold special yani, uh, talk and food because of Muharram, or we're going to have a special saying that you say to bring the year in, like your juice. And some people, they like to do this and encourage people because it's the beginning of the Muslim year. Like we'll have the beginning on the Gregorian calendar, January 1st. So you want to bring in the new year with some special worship and dhikr. La yalik. This is not befitting. Wa la yasih. And it's not proper. Wa la yajuz. And it's not permissible. La na nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Man amal amalan. Laysa alayna amruna fahu raddun. Whoever does the action in this religion that's not from the affairs of it, it's in itself, then it's going to be rejected. Now, Allah most high. And so this is an advice, this is a warning. And the ulama, they mention that there's no hadith that tells you to fast the last day of the hijjah, the last calendar before this month came, and the first day of al muharram there's no hadith for that. You will not get rewarded 50,000 years of worship and fasting, no. And you shouldn't have a special dhikr and special salah for the first of Muharram. Bring in the new Islamic calendar year and special food and sweets and treats. And also, Allah most time, there's no special dhikr or worship yani because of the sacredness of this month. And this is a sacred month. Of Salah called Shahrullahi Al Muharram with Alif Lam. Don't say Muharram. Say Al Muharram because this is what Salah said. And there's no other month Allah connected the Alif and the Lamb to make it Ma'rifa, to make it special and defined than this month. This is the month that the Prophet called it Shahrullahi to show its greatness and its nobility. And this is the month that. Um, Tabarakul wa ta'ala Najja Musa wa qawmah He freed Musa and his people from Fir'aun The great Balaam Ya'ani al tuqyan Al-Kufar Fir'aun Also Mubarakul wa fikum As we yani, we bring two more points In our close Some scholars said that In the beginning The Muslims yani, It was uh, legislated to fast on Muharram before Ramadan. Yeah, I mean, this was wajib on the Muslim. And this, yeah, I mean, from the command of the Prophet he told them to fast, and you could say that, as many scholars have said that, from the command of the Prophet, but this was before Ramadan. Ramadan. Then Ramadan came afterwards, and then Nusikha, of Siyam the Muharram Sara Mustahab. Then it abolished the obligation of fasting in Muharram and made it and demoted it to being highly recommended. Then Ramadan took its place, became an obligation for the Muslims to fast in place of Muharram, the month of Ramadan, as opposed to that one day in Al Muharram. Now, and then you have with Zakh Malukhiran. Last but not least, the issue, can you fast on Saturday? Yani, uh, as this year you will find Al-Muharram being on Saturday. And this statement, this question was asked of the ulama, yani, uh, because Shaykh al-Bani, he himself, he mentioned 
that it's not permissible to fast on Saturday. It's not permissible to fast on Saturday, yani, by itself or along with something because that the Christians used to fast on Saturday. And the Prophet ﷺ prohibited us from, again, yani, being like them in our worship, being like them in our, uh, uh, our actions for Salam. Yani, Amrona an musalli fi ni'alina wa an musalli yani biduni yani ni'alina to pray with our shoes on sometime and to pray with our shoes off sometime they said call it for yahud wa nasara he said be different from the jew and the christian sallu fi ni'alikum pray in your shoes why because they prayed with their shoes off they didn't pray with their shoes on the prophet said be different from them and he pray with your shoes on. Meaning, pray with them off, pray with them on. Don't always pray with your shoes off barefooted. Put some shoes on, put some socks on, put some sandals on. This is from the Sunnah of the Prophet. And some people try to practice this and then massage it. And it causes a problem because of the carpet. People said this is haram. And they use the eye of Surah Taha. Yani that Allah told Musa in the Kafir Mafi Wad in Makadis Tuwa. Now you are in the sacred valley of Tuwa, so we move Yani. Take off your shoes, he told Musa. That you were in the sacred valley. <laughs> but that's for the Sharia of Musa. From Salam, his Sharia wipes out all of the other legislation. We don't follow the Sharia of Musa. Uh, the Sharia of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and this the Prophet said, "Sallu fi ni'alikum qal fi yahud wa nasara." Be different from the Jew and the Christian. But of course, if you have a carpet, the masjid, it's going to make commotion. People think it's haram. Well, what are you doing? Well, the masjid is sacred. All your shoes are outside. Or are they dirty? Or are they this? Uh, people bring their funky, stinky feet in the masjid all the time. Funky socks, Frito smells. But if you come with shoes brand new, just out the box, put them on because you want to practice the sunnah of the Prophet, somebody guarantee you is going to say, Haram! Somebody might jump on your back while you're going to such that. Somebody's going to wrestle while your feet are on the prostration uh, 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 state and try to remove your shoes off your feet. Allah most high. So no one should be extreme and try to practice this and places that people don't practice this. If you're in the masjid, like we used to do this in the time of Shaykh on the Mukbil, in the match, he, and he allowed, used to call, used to tell the people to pray in their shoes. Somebody, nothing. So, no, no. so the and then, For that, and we understood the ruling that goes with it, the Shaykh will tell us, check your shoes first to make sure nothing of feces is on your shoes because you walk outside you can step in something mm -hmm. if you had something in your shoes the hadith yani yeah, clearly when the sallam yani yeah, removed his shoes the hadith of Abi Dawood Jibril came to him and said Ya Muhammad yani indaka yani qudr you have some feces on your shoes so the prophet took off his shoes while he was praying mm -hmm. so the companions took off their shoes in the salah can the salah for dhuhr adhan al-asr you have some يعني, uh, uh, feces, you have some najasa on your shoes. So the Prophet took them off, kept praying. So the Sahaba, <laughs> subhanAllah, I'll show you how close they followed the Prophet. Mm -hmm. SubhanAllah, they took off their shoes. All of them in the Salah. So when the Prophet finished praying, he turned around and faced them and seen them all with their shoes off. He said, my bad, <laughs> what's up with y'all? What, what's this? Why y'all take your shoes off? He said, we see you take off your shoes, so we took off our shoes. Mm -hmm. Then he said, in the Jibreel Atani, he said, Jibreel verily, he came to me and he informed me I had some, yani, color, yani, some feces, some of that, and it's harmful stuff, the jasper on my shoes, so I removed it. Allahu Akbar Kabir. So this hadith, yani, Sheikh Muqbil, he mentioned that yani, the thing is to remove the najas. Meaning, what am I? So, this is what we. Not in the Dabs al An. Sat al Akhir. Not in the Dabs al An. 
زحمة لخير الله يبارك فيكم لو تصبر يعني بعد الدرس يعني الإمام بيتكلم معك لكن نعم زحمة لخير نعم صلى الله عليه وسلم from his sunnah يعني to be different from the Yahud and Nasar to pray in Yahalikum in your shoes however يعني some ولما again they advise not to do it especially if you're going to make a problem in the masjid people don't know if the sunnah then it becomes يعني الله مستعان ممنوع you know wrong for you to do it because you, 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 it's not for you to make problem in the name of what practice the sunnah some people they don't know mm -hmm. they think this is haram even I remember in Damaj one of the Shia they used to come through because they lived in the match mm. within the outskirts and you know a few of them because this was Shia town before the Sheikh went to Saudi and learned and learned the Sunnah and brought the Dawah back to his village so mm. some of them would come through they had their own message that they were praying because they did not like Ahl Sunnah but in the beginning some of them would come and pray at the Sheikh Masjid mm. Allah Alam to spy to see what's going on Allah Alam so it became a fight between them and one of the Shia because they seen them the, the student praying his shoes, you know, when almost like a knife and, you know, some people that had like guns and stuff, you know, because this is tribal, so tribes, they carry guns. Mm -hmm. So the Sheikh told them for that period of time, khalas, not to pray in your shoes until it died down, fitna. Mm -hmm. Then they will teach the people, bring the hadith, explain this and that, refute the bid'ah of not praying in your shoes. And then once it became widespread, then people went back to praying in their shoes. Those who wanted to, and those who didn't, they wouldn't pray in their shoes. So Allah mm -hmm. So this... In the masjid? No, nah, in the masjid. Okay. the Allah sajada on the carpet. Yeah. And once the shaykh is set, yani, rather than to let the sunnah die, he said, I will tear this carpet up first for you pray on the cold floor. <laughs> because the love of the sunnah, yeah. This imam, you know, of the sunnah, this not us, you see. He taking the, reviving the sunnah of the prophet serious, man. Wallah, mm. musta'a. Mm. And again, he taught the people how to establish this. You look at your shoes. If you have something, you beat it. You wipe it the sand. You beat it to us off. Some people, they get a stick because you got little grooves. Get the stuff. You see the people really diligent and practicing all aspects of that sunnah. And then if you pray with your shoes off, you put them together and put them between your feet like in the hadith. Between your feet in front of you, you know. And if you were by yourself, then you can put them on the left. But if you have somebody on the left of you, you can't put them on the left because you offended the person who's next to you. So you put them between your feet, you know, in front of you. That's the sunnah. And then you will find the people practicing that sunnah, the masjid of imam, يعني أبي أعطي الرحمن مقبل هذا الوادعي رحمه الله تعالى. so this is important and we only mention this in context because the prophet said خالق يهود ما ذهبوا نصارى be different from them to that extent where he said pray in your shoes. now but again with 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 علم وقواعد with knowledge and the principles making sure nothing is on your shoes and if you pray in your shoes and you find you had something on your shoes. Well, I'm asking your salah is sahih, because you didn't know. Just like his salah was valid, Jibreel told him, and he took him off, but he didn't start over. Mm -hmm. He didn't owe any raka. He finished the salah to the end. Hakkada na'am. Tayyibin. And the other thing of Salam, he said, Yani Allah, uh, 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 about the lihya. How many hadith we have about the lihya? So Salam said, Fool. And trim يعني, the mustache. Leave the beard. It's a command. Why? He said, Be different from the Jew and the Christian. Grow your beard. يعني, because the Yahud will grow the beard, but they will cut the mustache off. And the Nasar the opposite. They will cut the beard, you know, but grow the big, thick mustache. Mm. One time, from Salem, he seen a man had a big mustache. He said, "Who told you to do this?" <laughs> you know, like motion to his his mustache, and the man he said, "My Lord command me to do this." And then from Salem said, "My Lord command me to do this." <laughs> Go grab his lefty ass. Subhanallah. Imagine big mustache, no face and hair, like you know. And some people they can't grow a beard, so that's not. You know anything against them, but people who can grow a beard, 
Yeah, no lie. If it's big, if it's long, if it's short, if it's shallow, yani, if it's patched, whatever. This is from as they say, rujula. This is from yani, uh, tamam rujula. This is for from complete manhood to grow facial hair. You know, this is the the, the hormones Allah put inside of a man to so have this. And some people they don't have it. They wish, oh man, I wish I had a beard to test. I want a beard to prophet sell them had a beard. Stop. Why did they create you with beard? But those who can grow a beard, prophets said, leave it. And why? He said, Khal fi yuhud ma ba wa nasara. So you have the issue of in your salah, the issue of your your facial appearance, and also the issue of fasting, as you said, la in the qait ila ya ni ma ba ma qabil la asumanna la asumanna ma ba ya ni tasir. He said, and if I live to be around next year this time I'm not only going to fast the 10th like the Jews the 10th to show gratitude the 10th to you know, commemorate the freeing of our brother and prophet and messenger Musa but I'm going to add the 9th to it to be different from those Jews so, so say, what year was that in the, in the prophet's life? Huh. What year was that, that was the year before he died that same year that he died he said that in, 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 in Muharram, mad fi Rabil Awwal, and he died in Rabil Awwal. The suffer Rabil Awwal two months later. That's why he didn't live to the next year to fast the 10th, the 9th. Yeah, I know when I heard that, I always figured that it was toward the end, and then I was trying to get the time frame kind of in my brain because of. Uh, I, I was wondering why he hadn't seen the Jews before doing that. Well, why? I mean, ilm in the law, the knowledge is with the law. Why? Wow. You know, events and stuff happen. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, I mean, that's just when it happened, but I was just trying to get the yeah. time straight because I was thinking. Maybe it happened, could have happened when he first got there or... La, 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 because if you yeah. understand yeah. the reason, and this is an explanation, I listened to some ulama, they explained it, like al, al, al Abdul Fawzan, he does mm -hmm. a great job with this, he explained it. Yeah. He said, when they asked about this statement, because some people said, this is confusing, the prophet said fast on the 10th, and he was fasting, but then he said, if I live to see next year, I'm going to fast on the ninth. But that narration means a tacit what I sure. Right? It means the ninth and the tenth. So some people took it to mean he's fasting on the tenth this year because he meets the Jews who are fasting in commemoration of Musa being freed and his people in gratitude. But then the prophet said, well, in Bapetu, yani, ila muqabila summa tacit. But if I live to see the upcoming year, I'm going to fast on the ninth. Mm -hmm. Somebody say, wait a minute. That don't make sense. Oh. He see the Jews on the 10th. He asked them what they're doing. Mm -hmm. They said fasting. He said why. He started fasting, told the companions. And then he said, but if I live to see next year, I'm going to fast on the 9th. Was Musa and them freed on the 9th? No. Or the 10th? The 10th. Okay, so if he's fasting this year on the 10th, because mm -hmm. he sees this action and says we have more right to do that, and gratitude and the connection to Musa than you all. Why would he the next year fast on the ninth? The Sheikh he said because he meant the ninth along with the tenth, right. and not just the ninth. Yeah. But yeah. when someone reads the Hadith, don't understand the fifth of this or why he even said it, they say it don't make sense. Mm -hmm. What should we do? Fast the ninth or the tenth? He fasted the tenth this year, but he said if I live to come the next year, I'm gonna fast on the ninth. What? They're confused. No. So I said, no. The reason he said that to begin with, because the companions, when he said, fast now on the 10th, we have more right to do this, thanking Allah about Musa and in connection with Musa than those Jews, he started fasting. No. Just like the other times when Aisha said he would ask anything to eat, and she said, no, he would do what? Start fasting in the middle of the day. So the hadith didn't say what time he observed them fast in the morning, you know, duha, zuhur, but we know it was in the daytime. Now, it seems like that, too, you know, that you mentioned that. Yeah. Um, so uh, uh, he didn't have to eat nothing from Fajr to that point? Because you can't fast if, if you ate. Okay. 
So there's no food. There's no food. Gotcha. Yeah, and this was one of his practices for his fasting in in his in his life. If he didn't eat nothing, mm -hmm. and then he came in to find was it something to eat. You know, he'd go out, pray for just do mm -hmm. this, do that. Maybe he'd come back after sunrise. Maybe he'd come back, you know, Buha time, whatever. Anything to eat? No, halas, I'm just going to spend the rest of this day fasting because you know your action of worship has to have a what? Okay. Intention. Yeah, you have to say, I'm going to fast to get the reward. Not, I'm just going to not eat. No, you're doing it to get a reward from Allah. Now, hey, so, so, so by that token, mm -hmm. the same thing has to be understood with this hadith of the Ashura. Yeah. He hasn't eaten, he sees the Jews. He asked them what's going, you know, you know, they have a relationship. So, you know, they might be sitting, gathering, saying, what's going on? How y'all doing? Mm -hmm. Oh, we fasting, Ya Rasulullah. You know, come and talk. Yeah. Oh, really? For what? Mm -hmm. Oh, this is the day that Allah freed Musa and his people. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Well, we should be doing that more than y'all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We believe in him. Y'all disbelieve in him by way of disbelieving in Isa and disbelieving in me. If you disbelieve in one prophet, you believe you disbelieve in what? All of them. Yeah. Good, huh? So if I'm selling, started fasting, and he said, who someone wants to fast, let them fast. Whoever wants to, yani, not fast, or break his fast, meaning eat something, although he hasn't eaten until this time, then let him do it. Tell you. So the Sahaba said to him, understanding his Sharia of opposing them, it's as if you're telling us to copy these cats. What's up with that? Mm -hmm. And so he said, mm -hmm. If I live to see the next year, mm -hmm. then he added the ninth, but it meant the ninth along with the tenth. So two things what is, is there a time of day if I haven't eaten that I'm allowed to start fasting? Is there some point in the day? Because it's before tradition, I thought it was before Salat al -Zohar. I mean, well, those hadith indicated that it was around that time okay. when he started fasting because he hadn't eaten anything. So at that point, he said, well, I'm just going to, you know, finish my day out as an act of revival. So they said for the nawafu, what nawafu is anything up to Ramadan. It's in the category of nawafu, meaning voluntarily, mm -hmm. extra, on your own, to get extra reward. Then they said, you can do that with the nawafu. It could be up to book or time. It could be up to you know, no and, later. I mean, or is it not that, there's no restriction on it. It's not the okay. As long as you haven't eaten. Yeah, that's the whole thing. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, and it's not restricted. Oh, man, it's an hour after Duhur. I can't fast. Right, or right. an hour. No. That's what I'm going to be clear about. No. Yeah, so, yeah. But this is mentioned, the hadith, some scholars say, to show you that. There's no restriction. So as, so as long as you haven't eaten, and this is not the fast of Ramadan, right. then you can turn it into you know, a fast. The last thing. So now, when did the eleventh come in in terms of the fasting with the Ashura? The eleventh came in for the one who missed a tasset. He missed the night. Okay. You know, sometimes people, they're not aware. Mm -hmm. You know, the ninth pass, and then it's now Ashura. Tonight is Ashura night. Somebody took this show. So she said, what? Man, I wanted to fast yesterday. Mm -hmm. So you fast tomorrow, Ashura, mm -hmm. and then to oppose the Jews, you get the day after. Okay. And that comes from the narration of Abdullah ibn Abbas, and it comes from the thick of the Sahaba understanding the whole idea of why the prophet even added nine with ten. Why? Gotcha. To oppose them. So if he did that for that reason, then it would be perfectly okay to do the tenth and the day after. And this is what Abdullah Abbas mentioned. And later on, 
in the Bavako of Fikum, uh, 6th and 7th century scholars such as Sheikh Islam Taymiyyah mm -hmm. and his uh, student who became Sheikh Islam Thani ibn Qayyim al Husiyah mentioned that this is yani, the three levels of fasting uh, the 10th the of Mahar, al Muharram, you have to fast the 9th and the 10th, or the 10th and the 11th, and then, or just the 10th by itself. And many scholars said that is detested because the Jews only fasted on that day. But you can do it. You know, it's better to do it than to not do it at all. And then some scholars said that you can fast 9, 10, and 11 with the intention to get the three days of the month. Okay. And you're still opposing them at the same time. Okay. Sure. Yeah. So this, yeah, the Allah Alam, Allah has a legitimate you are most best. So Allah subhanahu wa taala Oh, the last point I was making before you asked me that, as for the hadith that the Imam Al Albani said it's not permissible to fast on the Saturday, many of the ulama said that hadith is da'if. Even Imam Abi Dawood. Oh, good. Even Imam Abi Dawood, who collected that hadith in his sunan, said that the hadith was gharib. The hadith was gharib. Here means da'if. He mentioned yani, that that hadith, yani, fihi nadr, is some, yani, still investigating about the chain. He also mentioned in the hadith, yani, yani, uh, da'if is da'if. However, Sheikh al Albani. Yani Hassanahu said it is Yani Hassan Yani or Yani Sahahahu Yani deem it to be Sahih from some other chains. But most of the ulama of Al Hadith, Shaykh Al Muqbil, call the Hadith al Da'if. Wa Kadalik Shaykh Ibn Baz call the Hadith al Da'if. Wa Kadalik Shaykh Abdul Mohsen. Call a hadith and die. Could you have a lime in the hadith? Call a hadith and die. Wakadalek, Imam Mustafa Adawi, and all the man Muslim hadithing, call a hadith and die. Al Sheikh, the father, Imam Mahatat Faqih, Ali Ferkus from Al Jazair, from Algeria, from Africa, North Africa, call a hadith and die. I mean, after the Nas, Hakama. Uh, most of the ulama of hadith is hadith and da'if. Shaykh al Bani, Zahallahu Khayman al Islam Muslimin, Allah Jalzaz for his great contribution to Islam and the Muslims, is a ma'asum, it's not infallible. And when you talk about hadith that are outside of the known Sahih of Bukhari Muslim and Khadalik uh, and Muwatta Imam Malik and those other hadith that could be either sahih or da'if in any collection, then it's the issue of ishtihad. A person is trying to determine which side of this hadith fall in. Yani, because the hadith either is sahih, 100% yani, acceptable, yani, or they're da'if, 100% not acceptable, and then they're in the middle. So a lot of these hadith that some scholars may upgrade because the hadith, when you investigate it, it has more possibility and it leans more towards being unacceptable. Then sometimes it has more possibility and it leans towards being acceptable. So some scholar might say it's sahih, while the other will say no, it's da'if. Because it's in the middle. Mm -hmm. It's not sahih and it's not da'if, but it has the potential to be one way or another based on the investigation of the hadith and the facts of the hadith. So al Albani because of him deeming that hadith to be sahih, he says you can't fast on Saturday, yani, whether it's alone or, or, or with another day, yani, it, especially if it's not Ramadan. Ramadan, of course, there's a pass. Yeah. But if it's, for example, Arafat mm -hmm. on Saturday, he said no. If it's, yani, for example, Ashura is Friday, you want to add Saturday, or Ashura is on Saturday, and you know you want to fast just that day and you know he said no but yani, this yani, Allah Musta'an hadith is da'if therefore the only thing we know you can't single out to fast is what Yom Jumu'ah and Yom Al-Eid mm -hmm. 
You can't single out Eid to fast, and you can't single out Juma to fast. And the only time you can single out Juma to fast, if it's in the case, like we said, it's Arafat. Mm -hmm. Then there's an exception to the rule, because the Prophet encouraged you to fast in Arafat for those who are in Hajj. And like in this example, if Ashura was on Friday, you can fast on that day. And if you added a day before and a day after or not, it's okay because that's a particular reason in the Sharia to single out Juma to fast. But without a particular reason, this legislated, you cannot single out Juma for fasting, neither can you ever fast on Eid at all. So these are the only texts we have to say that a day shouldn't be singled out for fasting. That is, Eid never and the issue of Juma should not be in general unless there is a particular day that the Juma falls on and you have to fast on that day, such as Arafat, or in this case like Ashura, then it's okay, you know. Or if you're making up a day that you owe for Ramadan, you owe one day, you want to get that thing in before, you know, the Ramadan comes or you're doing six of the Ani Shabbat or anything like that, then it's okay, you know. Three white days. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Those, so all of those okay to fast on Juma, you know. And even if it's by itself, you have an excuse, a valid excuse like Arafat or Ashura, or you're making up a day and you, you, you say, I'm going to make this day up tomorrow because I was sick a week and I'm going to get it in before and maybe I'll get sick again. It's permissible to do that one day. Mm -hmm. Making up your days for Ramadan. You know, all the they mentioned this just as in conclusion, praying at the time is prohibited. Mm. Prophet said there's no salat after Fajr, Hatta, until the sunrise. There's no salat after Asr, Hatta, until the sun goes down. But if you enter the masjid, you have to pray, Yani Tahir to the masjid. Before you sit down, for example, say, "Yani ida dakhal al masjid, ya fala tajli subhatta, yani to salli rakaatain." Or can we call if you enter the masjid, do not sit down. Standing is another issue. I can come in and stand at the board all day without praying to raka, and I'm mm -hmm. teaching. But if I'm going to sit, I must pray to raka. If I'm going to sit down and talk and kick it and eat, I must pray to raka. Mm -hmm. So that. Is an exception to the rule. Even if it's after um, Asr, you want to sit, you have to pray. Mm -hmm. You realize, oh, I didn't pray Zuhur. It's after Asr when you pray. You got you have to wait till Maghrib to make up Zuhur. No, you make up Zuhur at that time. You have some Sunnahs that you normally make mm -hmm. for Zuhur or Fajr. Mm -hmm. And you remember, oh, I didn't make my Sunnahs of Fajr. Oh, I didn't make my Sunnahs after Zuhur. I was preoccupied running to the store, running errands. Even if the prophet prohibits you from praying after Asr, you can make up your sunnah at that time. You have valid reason in the Sharia. You have to make your stakhara. Valid reason in the Sharia. So just like that exception to the rule, there's exceptions for the rule, yani, uh, fasting for Juma alone. Yani, and this, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from us and to guide us aright. Hadha wa sallam 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 Muhammad. وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم تسليما كثيرا سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا هو أستغفرك وأتوب إليك جزاكم الله خيرا. I think I said the good is from Allah and the mistakes from myself of the shaitan. Allah is free from the both. Alhamdulillah. Top finish button.